Welcome to this segment of Frankly Franklin. Uh, joining me today is Danny, Danny Ware, our producer and fellow interviewee. And both of us are very, very fortunate to have with us two of our wonderful ladies, residents of Simpson County, uh, Mary Leslie Yokely and Mildred Harris, who are joining us today to talk about the, uh, their experiences during World War II as newlyweds and all the things that <laughs> impacted their lives with uh, the war going on and their husbands being uh, stationed overseas. Uh, and this is in support of the uh, Small Town Christmas and their theme this year of the uh, Remembering the War Years. So we're really excited to have both of you ladies with us today. Thank you. Welcome. Glad to be here. It's our pleasure, it is. Uh, before in the green room when we were uh, offering you all those wonderful snacks and champagne <laughs> and the dancing girls and all, we, we no, break no, Al. <laughs> He always has us about the green room and the refreshments. Oh. And I want the record to show that today there were cookies from the foods class at yes. the home ag department. So Which we're very know. grateful for. <laughs> all right, all right. Absolutely. All right. Truth Absolutely. in advertising now. Truth, truth in advertising. You may continue. <laughs> uh, Ms. Harris, if I could just start with you. You're not originally from Simpson County, but no, sir. but moved to Simpson County just before the war? Moved to Simpson County in nineteen forty. Nineteen forty. And your husband was Mr. Pascal. Pascal Harris. Yes. And uh, you shared with me that he went off in, uh, was it 1942? 43. 43, okay. Uh, he finished that school year and taught one more before he went in. And he was in the teacher profession, such as, uh, yes. the same as you? Well, he was a teacher of agriculture. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you were the home economics teacher at that time? Yes. Okay. And uh, then he was in, inducted in or volunteered in and went overseas in 1943. Yes. And, uh, and you told me that he was in the Pacific Theater? Yes, he was stationed on Guadalcanal. Okay, that must have been rough back in those days. Well, the fighting was over when he got there, but mm -hmm. it was not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Uh, Yokely, you uh, shared that you were a newlywed also? Well, we had been, yes, we had been married for some time, but we uh, did not have any children at that time. Prior to the war? Prior to the war. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that uh, was in 1943. In 43. And you are a, a Simpson County yes. from your childhood. Yes. So you're, you knew it about life in Franklin at that time and yes, I how, did. how I guess the experience that impact of change must have been well it quite, was quite, those, so, quite an impact. Those years were difficult years. I suppose they were really distressful years because the young men were being called into service and mm -hmm. they were leaving their hus their uh, husbands were leaving their wives and sons were going and uh, not a lot of women went, I suppose, maybe uh, as nurses they did go, but that was just about it. And um, so it was, it was a stressful time for all of us. But it was also, I would say this, that it was a very patriotic time. I think patriotism was at an at a all-time high during that time. And uh, uh, people really worked together and felt that this was a war that needed to be won. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when you all heard the news about Pearl Harbor, was that something you were expecting and it was just a matter of time, or was it a real shock that, yes, we are now in the war? Oh, I think it must have been a real shock to everyone. It was a shock, but we knew they were fighting, but it's still a shock. Yes. When they, because it was unexpected. Mm -hmm. I think that maybe the news came on a Sunday. Did you, or did you all yes, it was tune Sunday, your radios yeah. to right. hear what the news was? Or? Yes. You had to turn the radio on. You didn't have the TV at That's that time. That's for sure. Yeah. <coughs> we were not at home until about 4 or 5 o'clock that afternoon. Mm -hmm. So we missed the first impact of it. Yeah. It, must, it must have been quite a shock, though. Oh, yes. Because mm -hmm. the, the, the things were going well. The Depression was over. and. The, comp the country was doing well, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden, bang, we're, yeah. you're at war. That's right. What changes did you feel immediately uh, with, with the announcement of the Pearl Harbor attack? The patriotism, like you mentioned, Ms. Yeokley, yes. was rampant, I guess, at yes. that time. And yes. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. it, it was a surge was. of patriotism it, it at was. that time. It was an all-time high. Did you <laughs> see it in the children? Uh, Ms. Harris, you as a teacher, did you see that? in the children that patriotism or that desire to get out there and fight the fight? I was not teaching at that time. Oh, okay. I, I didn't teach until after I came back in 46. Okay. didn't teach here. Okay. Well, were, was your husband in a business here? 
He was a teacher. A teacher, okay. So you were a homemaker at that time? Yes. Okay. So what impact, were you a homemaker too, Ms. Yokely? Yes, well, uh, I was working in an office. Okay. I worked for um, the um, county judge at that time. He was Joe P. Clark. Uh -huh. Remember him? Wonderful. I knew. And I was very <laughs> <laughs> I I've been here 13 years. I certainly so I, knew. Uh, but yeah. I recognize yeah. the name for some reason, mm -hmm. but I can't identify uh -huh. why. What immediate so impacts I'm, were there with the war years on, on the household? Well, uh, young men were leaving, you know, and mm -hmm. it was uh, a sad time for uh, all of us. Um, they were, then the wives were traveling to meet their husbands or to visit them on occasion, and um, young girls in love with the young soldiers who had gone off, and mm -hmm. so uh, it was just a, a real sad time at, there for a while. And of course, for me, I think perhaps with the um, things that happened in our life after that, that uh, I. I keep remembering all those uh, sad times and the things that uh, br the war brought into our lives. Well, the war impacted your family dr dramatically. Very, very much so, you, yes. You lost your brother. I lost my brother. In the war. Mm -hmm. He was a bomber pilot, I, if I remember yes, correctly. Yes, light bomber mm -hmm. yeah. in England. And for those people who might be watching this show that might have known him, his name was Dan? Well, William. William? Da William Daniel, oh. really, but okay. we called him Dan. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. But I think when he was in service, he was Bill. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure with the military, they had to yeah, go with that yeah, first he name. Was Bill. Uh -huh. yeah. If I remember correctly, you said that you had that Mr. Yokely, when he went in, was stationed for a while out in the state of Washington. He was stationed at Van Vancouver Barracks in Washington. And you Vancouver, went out, Washington. Vancouver, Washington. Mm -hmm. And you went out to join him after he'd been there for maybe six weeks. Mm -hmm. Then I was able to go, and a friend of my, uh, my ours, her husband was also out there. And she and I went out together. Now how did you go? How did we, you, how was, what was the mode of transportation? Well, all right. Most of the transportation was by train. Of course, I think there were buses. But most of the transportation was by train, rail. So we did go out by Pullman. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then, uh, as uh, I think I was telling Dan earlier, that uh, about November, I think it was, that we uh, were able to come home for um, a leave. He got. Uh, maybe 16 days and of course there's three days traveling time both ways so you had about a week at home you know and then we went back out there and as soon as we got out there they were the, his unit was on alert mm -hmm. in two weeks they were gone so I stayed on a little bit longer than that and then I uh, came home to and lived with my mother and daddy we had a home at that time but we had moved out and rented were mm -hmm. for renting the home. So I moved in with my mother and daddy. And um, this was in November, the last of November. Willis was in New York waiting uh, to go overseas. And uh, my brother came home at Christmas for just a, a couple of days. And that one night he called home. Um, Willis was able to talk with him and they talked about you know, that maybe they would see one another because they both felt they were going to the European theater. Now, Dan was in Florida, though. He was, in, he was at Boca Raton. Oh, I believe there was an Air Force base there at one time. And he, uh, that's where his last uh, station here was. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was in, uh, as I say, December. And I'll tell you this, the, um, after he had hung up talking with Dan, I mean, with uh, Willis, he sat down at the piano and he had a natural musical ability. He had taken piano and played in the band, but uh, he would sit down and play, we say, by mm -hmm. ear, you know. Mm -hmm. So he sat down and he played A White Christmas. And that's my last memory of my brother. And I, I could hardly, um, for years, hear that song mm -hmm. without, you know, brought back this flood of memories. Even now, I don't like to even play But that's play a special one, though, isn't it? It's special, it yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I think a lot of people associate that with World War II. Wasn't it about that time that Dean Crosby the movie. recorded mm -hmm. it yeah. initially? Mm -hmm. and I think it's Irving yes. Berlin. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, once your husband's got overseas, how, 
frequent or infrequent were the letters back home? Did you hear well, from Well, he would write yeah. real often, but then they would come maybe several at a time, you know. We didn't uh, get, get them. I'm get curious, were they censored? Oh, yes. Yes, so they you were. Would, they would, mm -hmm. You would have there all were the, times What did it feel like to think that somebody had read mm -hmm. your, your husband's letter, your personal I letter? Know. But they, they did. Sarah, like Harris, yeah, yeah, did, did here, you have so that no. experience also? Oh, yes. I would get uh, what they called email. It's the same, the, not the same not thing the same now. now. <laughs> but it, it, was, it was photographed. Yes. And then when it got to the States, it was enlarged again. And I had, oh, I got scads of letters that had holes in them. <laughs> Just cut out the holes. And yeah. after the war, this surprised me, but after the war was over, I guess six months, I got a letter from the army, and I, I can't remember where it was mailed from, San Francisco, I think, with all the pictures that they had taken out of it. Oh, um, he, had, he had taken pictures? He had taken pictures and thought he was sending them home. Okay. But they, don't. But they kept them. They kept them. And then, returned and then them sent to them you. to me. That, hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't see from looking at the pictures what was terribly secretive secret. about them in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, back at that time, though, with, uh, with the high rate of pa patriotism, there was also a high rate of... Uh, Spying. What was it? The, the, the sure. famous uh, loose lips sent ships. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I remember that from my history class. Yeah. Probably might have had a 19-year-old boy making those decisions. Anyway, <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, really well, service, and he wanted to make sure he didn't <laughs> do the wrong thing. So. Well, now I know, Miss Harris, you were involved with uh, distributing rationing coupons here before you went to Evansville. Did that start yeah. almost immediately after the war, or was that a little later? It seemed to me like it started pretty soon because we were still here and. Uh, uh, they wanted volunteer help mm -hmm. to distribute these ration books, and I didn't. I wasn't working away from home, and I. Ms. Yogle has got one there. Yeah, let's let's. I told that, my dears that. these were my mother and daddy's, and there are stamps left in those books. Okay. Well, you keep talking, and it I'll see. It says on the front of people can't see it. It says sideways here. It says ration ration books, ration tokens. And then there's a number. Was that an individual number, or was that just I don't know about that, that number, style? but uh -huh. uh, the book is inside, see. The, okay. And the, this book was just um, maybe for a certain length of time. I don't know how long they were a month. good for. A month. And then you had to apply for a new book, didn't you? Yes. And the coupons were dated to the extent that you couldn't use them when they ran out. Yes. Of course, we saw to it that none of them uh -huh. ran out. Yeah. yeah. And you could... Uh, give them to somebody else. They were transferable. Mm -hmm. Of course, you couldn't sell them. Were no, there was this food or food gas was rationed? Or? Gas was rationed. Shoes were rationed. Shoes. Tires. Interesting. Tires. Well, were I could rationed. be right. Rubber w would be needed for the war mm -hmm. effort. There's, Gasoline, of course. Yes, there are some stamps in there that mother didn't use for coffee, and uh, sugar, nothing. sugar and flour, flour, uh, fats. Butter, mm -hmm. lard, yes. and things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And meats. Yeah. You could just get so many pounds of meat that month. Mm -hmm. Now, these are different colors, and, and it doesn't mm -hmm. specifically say, but I guess you knew by the color and the number what that was a stamp for. They wouldn't take it if it wasn't the right one. Now, were mm -hmm. you limited to the quantity that yes. one of these could be turned in for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, was it, or was it a price, or how did it relate? It was quantity. 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 Uh -huh. Like a pound it, of butter would these, be... These were scarce items. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you couldn't even uh, give a stamp to anyone else. I mean, you had to use your stamps for yourself. Mm -hmm. There were strict uh, regulations about the use okay. of these stamps. At the time... Neither of us drank coffee, so we gave our coffee stamps away. Mm -hmm. But you know, I didn't think you were supposed to do that. <laughs> Nobody. Oh, a secret, oh. A state secret, Jane. Mm -hmm. This is the first year. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe the statute of limitations <laughs> has run out on that, Miss Harris. <laughs> <laughs> now, some of these are marked spare. Could you use those for? I don't remember. Other that. purposes. I I see these that are marked coffee, and then, <clears> then these <throat> right next to them say spare. And then these have they were you know, spare numbers. tires. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> easy. <laughs> well, Miss Yelke, did you live in town or did you live out in the country? We lived in town. In town. I was just uh -huh. wondering how, like butter and fat, uh, dairy products, how that related to the person that was making their own out in the county. Well, I, I imagine that that was fine. That they would encourage you to use what you could, 
I, right. Didn't they have victory gardens? And, yes. Uh, you know, I and people would uh, uh, plant their gardens so that they could use those mm -hmm. products rather than to go to the market or the stores to, okay. to, to buy them. And those were intended for each household to provide for itself so yes. it's not to yes. cut into the stores that mm -hmm. could go overseas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As many as, as you had in the family, that's what determined your number of ration books. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then every month you would have to go down to an office and you worked in this office? No, I didn't work in the office. I was a volunteer. They, I just sent, they sent me out to Prospect Hill. Mm -hmm. Which was a when they were county being school, school. Right. when they were being handed out the first time, mm -hmm. and we, it was our job at that time to everybody in that in the Prospect Hill area came in to the Prospect School to apply for the rations books, and they had to tell us their ages and how many children they had and what ages the children were and mm -hmm. so on, and then we issued those books. But uh, after the first initial giving out of them then I think they went to a, an office here in town if they had to apply for them, say a new resident or a new child okay. or something. I've seen some photographs of the courthouse that were made during the war years and there's a big billboard out in the courthouse yard talking about buying war bonds and, and right. how many went up there. Mm -hmm. They'd have those how, drives, you know. And, and that, that was to get people to... To get people to buy those bonds and, and we would buy, you know, what we were able to do, uh, to buy at that time, and encourage people to buy those bonds. Was that hooked into the entertainment industry? No. The, the war drive? No. I always think of, of or about movies, and they would always have something beforehand about mm -hmm. victory bonds. Mm -hmm. trailer on there. A trailer. Well, they probably would promoted stars it. Would, would be at these uh -huh. different big I, I imagine it was just a promotional for them. Okay. Yeah. But so part of the war effort. Mm -hmm. But this was part to help the war. government have cash to, to pay mm -hmm. for all the things that had to be Right. Produced produced war. For, yeah. yeah, right. Well, speaking of producing things, now, when you went, Ms. Harris went to um, <laughs> Evansville, and I, I, I joked with her on the telephone when I called and asked her to come about whether she was Rosie the Riveter, and she wasn't quite that, but she was Mildred the Inspector. So t tell us what happened, uh, uh, how you got interviewed and, and, and wound up in an aviation plant. I went over to Evansville. I went back to my home when Pascal went into the service. And the next week, I went over to Evansville to uh, apply for a job. And anybody that worked in that area went through that office to make their application. So they began to ask me what I could do and what my circumstances were, how many children I had and where I lived and how all that. And I told them I had been a school teacher and they wanted to know what I taught. I told them I had been a teacher of home economics. And they said, can you read a blueprint? And I said, yes, because that was one of the things that they did teach us. And I guess these people knew it, I don't know. And so they said, you report upstairs to the Army office, Army Air Corps. And I went up there and they sent me out to Republic Aviation, where they were building the Thunderbolt, P-47. And I worked out there until they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima, Nagasaki. Nagasaki. No, the first one. You know, oh, Hiroshima, Hiroshima or Hiroshima. Hiroshima. We used to say it. Hiroshima. 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 Mm -hmm. Hiroshima. Yeah. And they closed the plant the next day. That quick. That quick. Hmm. My goodness. Well, I guess the European campaign was over at that point. Yes. So <clears throat> and, victory and in Europe had already been established. Several of the excuse me soldiers that were in Europe were being sent to the West Coast with the idea of sending them on into the Pacific, mm -hmm. which was going to be double duty. And I don't know whether any of them ever made it or not. And the, after they had been in Europe, whether they on went, went on. Because uh, it was like May to August between Victory in Europe and Victory yeah, Japan. End, so end of April, April, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Until August. 8th. Well, continue with your story. So they said you could read blueprints and you report to Republic Aviation. And so my job you? was to be an inspector for the Army Air Corps. And they gave me Army Air Corps insignia. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had uh, pretty much the freedom of the plant. Mm -hmm. The men that, or people that worked there were assigned to a certain area, and that's the area they went to and not to any more. Uh, 
the first place that they put me was in a department called receiving. Mm -hmm. And they were receiving the, uh, sub from the subcontractors, the small pieces that went into the uh, plane. And they, uh, my job was to check the Republic inspectors, see that they were making an accurate check. And if I had any question about it, I could take whatever they were working on and check it against the blueprint. And if they didn't have a blueprint there, then I could go check one out, come back and check it. And uh, they were pretty good about checking it. They didn't want us to catch anything, uh, uh, anything that they were doing that was wrong. Well, they changed the, uh, the Army inspectors, and, and they never addressed us as anything except Army. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know who we were or care, just so they called us Army. See. And uh, they moved us from one department to another. And one time, they put me into the warehouse where the motors came in, these huge motors. Part of them were Ford and part of them were Pratt Whitney. And <laughs> I couldn't check a motor. That wasn't my job. But they, I worked with a man who climbed the ladder, the, these things were stacked sometimes three high, and took off the serial number off the box mm -hmm. and checked the um, silica gel package. And then I wrote, I stood down here and wrote down what he was saying. And we had to check their inventory up against the plane, the boxes that had come in. And if one of them looked like maybe it had gotten damp somewhere or other way, he had to hang a tag on it. And I don't know whether this is public information or what, but anyway, we lost a motor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder who got it. <laughs> that, of course, was a puzzle. There was no way they could get that thing out of there. Uh -huh. <laughs> had it been received and then disappeared, or? It had, it had been received, <clears throat> and uh, I, I, it must have been numbers. Anyway, we checked it in. And they never checked it in on the line. Of course, they had a huge assembly line down here. They started with a little bit of pieces, and out here they rolled the paint off. <laughs> and uh, we went over to the area where they were taking them out of the crates and so on. And of course, when we reported it, well, it was out of our hands. A big dog came in then. <laughs> they never did find it. Unsolved mysteries. <laughs> well, did your school teacher's demeanor serve you in good stead <laughs> as an inspector? <laughs> yes. Uh, one of the times I was walking up and down the floor, and it was a huge place, and they had tables, just long tables, with the people seated on either side of them, you know, doing whatever they were supposed to be doing. And I was supposed to be checking them, and I, when you're on duty, you have to do. So I was walking up and down looking for them, and this man said, were you a school teacher? <laughs> and I said, yes, sir. Why? He said, you're the only person I ever saw that could walk up and down and see everybody and never open your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm curious, when they said, they, you know, could you read a blueprint, they said, okay, upstairs. Did they do any kind of security check? I mean, were things at that point, was there any feeling of, uh, of uh, not that there were spies were among us? And, you know, I, I grew up on the East Coast, so there was more threat there, and I heard stories about mm -hmm. security. Did Franklin have that kind of a situation, or this quarter of the country? Did well, you I, don't really, I don't, don't, don't really call that. No. Yes, yeah. they did uh, over Security there. Check for but you. I, before you went in into the plants, mm -hmm. yeah. before I went into that plant, yeah. they checked with uh, my father. They and what well, he, he did. for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't go ask him any questions oh. about me. They checked on him. I should have said. Okay. About where he worked and what he had done and so how old he was and so on, and what his attitude was toward the war, and uh, my brother, also. Uh, they, they wanted him in Oak Ridge. He was a chemist. And uh, they took him to Oak Ridge. He never did tell us what he was doing. Mm -hmm. But we found out later that they had sent men from the FBI and from the security and so on and checked every relative he had. Hmm. Of course, that would have been very sensitive there. <laughs> well, we talked at the beginning about when the news came about Pearl Harbor, and I'm curious. When you all would get home at night, would you 
turn the radio on to hear war news and, and oh, yes, if they're like to know if, if you heard something about an, radio, an area radio at that where time. your relatives were, yes. were you glad to hear or did you rather not know? You didn't well, very well know where they were. Okay, so you just knew everything was censored. That so you, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have known. You might have you known. You knew the general England. area. Yes, right. I had mm -hmm. a, a first cousin who was killed on Omaha Beach on D-Day, but we didn't know it for a long time. Omaha I, Beach being one of the Normandy landing beaches Normandy. for D-Day, right? So it was well, before he was before you got the news. Weeks had yes. Okay, and uh, well, he was not living in Kentucky. He he had enlisted in from California. Mm -hmm. And then I had a, a cousin that was right there in Webster County who who was a pilot and his plane went down and they had no news from him. And we didn't hear anything from him for a long, long time. And the French resistance had found him, mm -hmm. picked him up, kept him safe, sent back, sent him back home. So well, now he, when, he survived it. when yeah. my brother was... Um, um, killed in that, you know, mm -hmm. in, in England. We had heard that immediately. Uh, it was he's. It was on February the fourteenth that this happened, and uh, they uh, came Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day mm -hmm. Uh huh. And I remember Mother and I were in the kitchen, and um, the doorbell rang. Daddy went to the door, and of course, uh, Mr. Red <laughs> Duncan. You remember him? Mm -hmm. He was chairman of the American Red Cross, and of course, the telegram came to him. And then he called our pastor, who was um, Dr. T. Emerson Wortham. And those two came, and of course there were some friends came also, but those two came to bring the message. And I can remember that <coughs> Daddy walking back through the house, he came to the, to the kitchen door, and we, <coughs> excuse me, we were there, and he just stood there. He, he couldn't speak. Had this telegram in his hand. And then finally he said, Mother, it's Diane. This is the scenario we see in the film, where the car drives mm -hmm. up outside the house mm -hmm. and there's the knock That's on the it. door. And this was real life. It is. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's just so hard to conceive that this has happened mm -hmm. because there's, there's nothing there. I mean, just all you have is this piece of paper, mm -hmm. this telegram. I'm sure our, our, several other families here in Franklin went through similar circumstances. Yes. Oh, they was did. People who weren't necessarily related, would they in any way try to lend support to one oh, another? Oh, yes, they did. Like they were very supportive. By, of course, we had close friends who were... attending memorial service or visiting yeah, or very, I had a very dear friend. You remember Gladys Hendricks? Yes. She was my best friend, and she spent many, many days and nights with us. She taught school also, but she'd come home and come to my house and spend the night with me, mm -hmm. and, and she was very supportive, along with many other people. Would you all write very many letters if it was so long until you got letters, and then they were censored? Yes. W would you still Keep write letters, regularly? Yes. Uh, did you have every day. Keep the every letters day. going. Mm -hmm. Now, were yours censored? Did Mr. Yook, did Willis ever say that yours were censored to him, or I was it just the one way back? Well, uh, it may have been both ways. I don't recall that uh, he ever said that my letters mm -hmm. were were censored. I think you were more or less careful about what you wrote, or mm -hmm. I was. Yeah. Did you, were, were you able to send things to your husband, like you know, a box little of cookies package. or oh, little yeah. packages of goodies? Yeah, for you, and did they get them? Yes, they did. <laughs> they got them. You must have a story, Miss Harris. <laughs> I <laughs> brought a lab to you. I sent, I had a tin box about that tall and about that big around, and I sent, filled it with cookies and sent it down to Guadalcanal. <laughs> he wrote, when I I don't know when he wrote, but when I got it, he said they were good crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure he enjoyed receiving I, something. I bet he did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You all remembered Pearl Harbor Day and, and hearing that news. What was it like when the news came of the war being over in Europe and in Japan? We see pictures. I mean, you know, the famous Life magazine picture of everybody out <laughs> in the streets of New York. Was there anything in Franklin? I well, mean, did the, the siren go off? Yes, or any, the uh, church bells rang, and then we had a service. I believe it was over at the Methodist Church where the, everyone came in, and we had a, a, a time of thanksgiving and rejoicing. Were the bells the clue? I mean, some, all of a sudden the bells started ringing, and you knew something was up? And then well, now, I don't recall about that. Okay. Perhaps we had heard it, but anyway, when it 
was officially announced, uh, that is what happened. Uh -huh. So yeah. that would have been victory in Europe. In Europe. Now, was there the same spontaneity and excitement with victory in Japan, VJ Day? Well, yes, but there were, of course, as many people from around here in Europe as there were over there. And I was still at, at Republic Aviation. Oh, that's right. You were still at Evansville. And the uh, call came over the internet, or inter Intercom. Intercom. <laughs> Came over the intercom. You got email. Oh, yes, <laughs> you were ahead of your time, is there? <laughs> <laughs> well, all army personnel retort, report to the upstairs office immediately, mm -hmm. and we all went up there and they told us. And uh, then, pretty soon after they told us, then they announced it over the mm -hmm. intercom for the whole plant. Mm -hmm. And yes, there was a great deal of um, celebrating. Mm -hmm. Well, they had done the same thing on uh, D-Day when they started in. Mm -hmm. They called us all up there. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, how much money did they pay you as an inspector of a, of a bomber, of a dive bomber? Well, not in comparison to its worth. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can't remember. I, I felt adequately paid. I don't remember that I was doing it for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> doing your patriotic well, duty, volunteering. Did you ever fly in one? In a Republic Aviation? Uh -huh. Oh, they were, uh, that Thunderbolt wouldn't hold with one person. So they couldn't take a passenger. They okay. couldn't take passengers. Mm -hmm. They did do this. Uh, they, they wanted us to see those planes and they wanted us to see them fly. And uh, of course the hangar was right close to the building where I worked. I could walk out on the, <laughs> What would you call it instead of a porch? <laughs> and see the well, planes take off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just take them off, you know. They take uh -huh. off. We would know when they were going to be a, 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 a bunch leaving. And you'd just see them, they'd just fly off one mm -hmm. time and so on. One time they told us they closed the plant down for a, a, an afternoon and all personnel in the plant and the army and everybody else go out on the uh, landing strip. And we didn't know what for, so but we went out there. And <coughs> the president of Republic Aviation had a little platform, of course, and he started talking to us, and he wasn't saying anything really important that I could <laughs> see. And he said, uh, be sure that you look at me. Be sure you look at me. Well, he had us all facing the southwest. And all at once, he said, look over your right shoulder. Well, here came a bunch of those P-47s right over the field, and you didn't even hear them till after they were gone. Hmm. And that was when they first told us about a sonic boom. Hmm. Oh, interesting. That is. Mm -hmm. Well, other than the missing engine, what souvenirs do you have from that time? <laughs> <laughs> now, Al. <laughs> Did you keep anything from that era, anything as a memento? No, they gave us a, a badge and uh, uh, our picture was in red, white, and blue, different from the, but we had turned all those in. Hmm. They didn't want us to bring anything out. <laughs> Ms. Shokley, you found that, I think you shared with us, the ration book in your mother's possessions oh, yes. after uh -huh. she passed she, away? Yes, she yeah. had a trunk of all the little memorabilia, you know. Uh -huh. So I recall that she did, I had seen that book, so I, when uh, you asked me to come down, I went down and went through that things and, and found it. It's interesting because that, that is a, a, a piece of history. Yes, isn't it, it is. Uh -huh. uh, and I'm not sure, I know you all were just infants, if at all, even alive, but in World uh -huh. War I, did they have ration books? Were things like that? I wonder. Oh, I, don't, I, don't I don't remember my World history World okay. well enough. I always think of rationing with mm -hmm. uh, World War II. Right. Uh, I don't think they did. Okay. I know I talked with my parents about that era and tried to get some information, and, mm -hmm. and life was they, different. It yeah. changed. Uh -huh. you, you didn't well, have free access. My father was not involved anymore. But, uh, mm -hmm. How long after the war ended before your husbands were discharged and came Lewis home? was over there three years. He three years back, after he, the end? Three, almost to the, to the day. He left in April, came back in March of, of um, 46. Six, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So he was in the European campaign, so he would have been with the, probably trying to get the, was he in the Corps of Engineers or was he in no, the No, he was in the Quartermaster. In the Quartermaster? Uh-huh. So they would have been trying to, to get Europe back onto mm -hmm. its feet. Right. 
uh, Ms. Harris, when, how long was it? You sh I think you shared an interesting point that Mr. Harris got pulled out of Guadalcanal and sent someplace else. New Zealand. To New Zealand, not bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all, all by himself. And his no. job was uh, making sure that the foods... Mm -hmm. Quartermaster Corps quarter again. Okay. Uh, he came home in March of 46. Mm -hmm. They came home at just about time. the same no. time then, because mm -hmm. Liz came home in March. Yeah, my dad came home in the spring of 46 also, mm -hmm. so yeah. I was not about two and a half when he saw mm -hmm. me for the first time. Oh, so yeah. that must have been an impact. You all, oh. did, did you have children, Ms. Harris? I, no. I don't, okay. But you hadn't had yours yet. No. So, but uh, I wonder what it was like for the women who, who well, had to stay that, behind with that's raising right. children. That's, of course, they took the young men mm -hmm. first who did not have uh, families. Mm -hmm. And then they, <clears throat> later on, they did take men with children. Now, I know I had a friend, of course, uh, you all know, J.B. Dobbs. Mm -hmm. He was in with two children. And uh, so there were, they did take men with children. His later grandson, on. Mark, is a history teacher now. And in our yes. next segment, he's going to join some of our other history teachers. And oh, they're going to talk about the significance mm -hmm. of the war and, and how its impact is still yes. felt today. And it is. Speaking of that next segment, I think our time's about oh, up. Oh, gosh, I can't <laughs> believe it. I mean, it's so, flown by. It's gone so fast. It, it does indeed. You had so much to share with us, and I know we've just literally taken the cherry off the cake, haven't even gotten to the icing. <laughs> <laughs> but we do well, appreciate your time with us and you. sharing your memories. Enjoyed being uh, here with you. Well, thank you. It's nice to see you all, and wave to Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep the home folks happy, right. just like in the war. Keep the home folks happy. All right. Well, Dan and I thank you again for your All time. Right. Well, very well. Thanks very much. Glad to do it. Stay tuned, please, and I hope you enjoyed this segment because I sure did.